you know, you'd get that feeling of, wow, this is the day I'm probably going to die. Good day to die, though. It's beautiful. Coming up on BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. The Cougars are coming off of back-to-back -back wins. Now they're back home for two games this week. Coach Rose here to break it all down. Plus, sophomore starter Zach Selyus with us here in Studio C, where BYU Basketball with Dave Rose starts now. Inside, eight scores for two seconds. It is all over. From 40 feet, yeah, this is a, a really good week for us. Hopefully, we can now you know repeat it and, and get, get rolling. A push together. Here's a steal. Childs ahead to Haas. TJ with one defender to beat. Reverse land. Go! Elijah into the alley. Bounce pass to Yo Collects and hammers it home. This is BYU basketball with Dave Rose. Presented by Siegfried and Jensen, live from Studio C in Provo, Utah, with your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, hello and uh, good evening once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome you back inside the beautiful BYU Broadcasting Building here in Provo, Utah, for another edition of our weekly hour of Cougar Hoops Conversation. As always, we're in front of a live studio audience here in Studio C. Easy to get here and join us. Just go to BYUcougars.com slash Rose Show and reserve your free seats for next week's show. We invite you to join the conversation on Twitter as well. Use the hashtag Rose Show. We'll be taking questions from Coach Rose and our weekly player guest. It's Zach Selyus tonight, and we want to use hashtag Rose Show for those questions. I am joined on set by BYU head coach Dave Rose. And Coach, one of those uh, two-win weekends that we love so much uh, last weekend and your first set uh, of back-to-back uh, of -back wins in conference play. Yeah, I, I think that it started off great on Thursday night. We, uh, we got off to a pretty good start against Pepperdine. And uh, the first half, they were actually, they made quite a few shots. But the second half, we locked them up pretty good defensively and kept scoring. And then it just kept, the momentum kind of carried over for, for Saturday night. I, I, I mean, I like kind of the way the team's coming together. We made a few adjustments uh, with our lineup. I think that uh, you know, really kind of helped us. But um, I think the most important thing is that our, our guys really learned a lot from, from the weekend before. There's a couple other things that I really like about last week. The guys were back in school. You know, you think that, that that might be a distraction, but in reality, it's actually the routine is actually way better for us. I like I liked the routine. And uh, so uh, now we're starting our second week in, in school, and hopefully, uh, you know, we can pay dividends with uh, the, the, the play on the floor. You mentioned adjustments, and one of them was a new starting five. You put Zach Selyus back in your starting group for the first time since uh, late November. Yeah, kind of an interesting move, really. I, I brought Luke in my office and started talking to him. and said, this is going to sound like maybe one of the strangest things you've, you've heard. You had your, probably your two best games as a Cougar, and I, I think we need to make a little bit of a, a change here. And he was, he, he was tremendous. I mean, he's one of our captains, and all he's here to do is to – to help our team win, and, and he said, uh, these are the three things you can count on from me. You can count on me being you know, really involved and trying to help the other guys. You can count on me uh, being really vocal and playing you know, as hard as I can. And, and he continued to have you know, two more really good yep. games. And uh, so we'll see. I don't know if this is you know, what we'll do forever. I, I think there's, like, there's some matchup issues this week that uh, you know, could you know, maybe uh, have us you know, change a little bit as far as our personnel is concerned. But uh, I really like the way our guys attacked last week and, and the results of the week. Let's get to your two games last week. We'll start with you uh, welcoming the waves of Pepperdine into Provo. It was BYU and Pepperdine last Thursday night at the Marriott Center. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's a team that always causes us issues because they're really athletic. Their guards are, are, uh, are big and strong and, you know, they're multiple players as far as being able to put it on the floor score it from the perimeter and drive it. But we got off to a good start offensively. Here's a great pass from Elijah down to Yolo, and we finished that. And uh, when they get in that zone, if we can get the ball below the zone, we usually get pretty good possessions out of it. This was something that was a real concern for us, is that they, they really score in transition. And and uh, we won't, I think the most points we'd given up in transition to this game was maybe six. They had 11, and so uh, that was something we really had to 
Christian Asher up at, at Santa Clara. But there's a great penetration by TJ, and he flips it out to, to Eli, and Eli hits the three. Eli's been just shooting the ball so well lately, and TJ had a lot of confidence in him to give up the layup and actually you know, throw it out there for the three. There's another three-point shot. And I think they hit four or five threes in the first half and then just got one in the second half. And there's a, a nice breakaway by uh, TJ and uses the rim, goes underneath the rim and uses the rim to protect the shot and then makes a nice layup. Here in the second half, we really got them spread out pretty good. There's a nice cross-court pass from Zach to Eli in that zone again. Here's Eli pulling up. The defender goes underneath the screen. So he pulls up behind the screener and, and makes a nice shot there. And, uh, this is McKay flipping it to Zach, and that, that was a really you know, good sign for Zach. Yeah. Yeah, Zach shooting the ball, um, and then he you know, hit a you know, big one over in, in Santa Clara. There's, uh, I think it was TJ that hit that shot. McKay. McKay with McKay. Yeah, a couple from McKay. You know, we got a couple threes from McKay, uh, a couple threes from TJ and Zach, and that, that really helped. Uh, the scoring because Eli and Yo have kind of been doing the majority of the scoring and, and we got a lot of guys to help there and got it in the 80s which is a good number for us. And a big shooting night uh, near 60 percent it would get better on the weekend and we see Yoli there with uh, with a double double and that'd be the first of two we would have uh, last weekend because right from that it was the quick turnaround and it was your first home road split so you play the home game then you're on the road Friday uh, to the California coast. Yeah and you know travel wise it's probably the easiest to get in and get out of Santa Clara. You got San Jose Airport that's right there close to the university. You stay in a hotel, right? And and it's, uh, so the travel part was, was, was you know, not as complicated. Sometimes you got to fly, you know, into place and bus a while, but this was pretty simple. And, and um, you know, we didn't go to the gym on, on Friday night and shoot. We, we just practiced here and, and uh, the way we play, maybe we, we might continue to do that, actually. Because yeah, uh, that, that's a change in routine for you, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, our guys really – we had a great practice, and they, they really uh, got a lot done on that Friday. And so, uh, But here's some highlights. Uh, you know, they started the game – I think they scored on their first five possessions. And big fella coming off the bench hadn't scored a point in the league and hits a big three against us. And you just kind of wonder what kind of game you're going to get from these guys. And – and then we kind of took off. There's great penetration by Yo. I mean by uh, Eli, and Yo stays down below the the defense. and gets a big pass and finishes it. And you know these two guys have developed you know, some really good chemistry between the two of them. I, I like how uh, Eli and, and Yo look for each other. There's great play by Luke. Again, the guy goes underneath the screen, and uh, TJ steps back behind it, hits a big three, and TJ hit four threes in this game. There's a great pass by Yo. Um, to Zach, which is a kind of a reversal of what normally happens. Yep. Zach usually is giving that to Yo. There's this year pushing it and hitting Zach in the corner for another big three. So you can see that we're, we're getting a lot more, uh, you know, help from a lot of different guys, especially on the offensive end. I think our team's getting better defensively every game we play. But uh, if we can get more balance offensively, I think we can. There's a nice drive by Ryan. Ryan's really starting to play a lot better. Hopefully we can find him some minutes because he's got good size, good skill for on the guard line, can help our depth. His four points were a career high for Rye, and you guys finished out with that big 34-point win there at the Levy Center. You went from 58% uh, one night to 62% the next. A really good weekend for you guys offensively. You've been uh, in that 50-plus range uh, for most of the season, really. Yeah, I, I think that... Uh, you know, the, the real goal in the offseason is to become a, a, a better, more consistent half-court offensive team. We've always been really good in transition and had other ways to, to score the ball. But uh, Yoli's doing a really good job inside. I mean, you think about his weekend. He had a career-high six assists on uh, Thursday, and then he had another career-high eight assists on on, uh, on Saturday. And, you know, uh, what do you have, 12 rebounds? I, th I think he was a couple assists away from a triple-double on Saturday so um, for me I think the most important thing right now is balance and you get scouted so well in league and teams are so good at taking things away that you can't just rely on one or two things or one or two guys and I think that's probably the most positive thing and exciting thing about the weekend is that it's starting to spread out a little bit and the more confidence the more guys get the better we're going to be.
Congrats to you, by the way, on the WCC Player of the Week. And relative to balance, beyond those big two, you're looking for at least a third or a fourth guy. And, and T.J. Haas hadn't hit double figures in any of the first four games in the league. And then he goes for, I think, 10 and 14 in last weekend's games. And uh, that three-point stroke looked like the T.J. of old we yeah. saw on Saturday. And, you know, I, I think that uh, with T.J., I, I, I actually believe that he's a better all-around player right now than how he was playing last year at this time. He's not scoring the ball near as much, but his assists are up. His ability to defend the ball, his ability to help, help defense is really good. And, and now if we can just get him to get back to, you know, where he, what he's done his whole life is, is make threes, score the ball, get to the basket, make plays for others, uh, you know, then I, I think we've got ourselves uh, one heck of a player. So last week was really positive development that way in terms of scoring the ball for, for TJ. For TJ, yeah. And, and, you know, for Zach. I think, I think, you know, those two guys had such – phenomenal freshman years and and you don't you just kind of take it for granted but you know listen we've been playing basketball here for 100 and some odd years and they have unbelievable freshman records that means they're the best freshmen that have ever played here in certain areas yeah. and so everybody just kind of thinks all right we'll just jump into your sophomore year and and uh, you know there's a lot of expectation from these kids and I, I I like the way that they're kind of you know playing into um, the way that we can use them on this team that'll help us be the best we can. Well, after the weekend, Dave, we're already a third of the way now through the league campaign. Six of 18 games are played. Let's see where BYU fits in the WCC standings after a 2-0 and week. We see the Zags and St. Mary's up top at 6-0, and and uh, they play each other on Thursday. Uh, St. Mary's in Spokane. And then a three-way tie for second involving BYU, Pacific, and USD, and you'll see the Toreros on the weekend. We'll get to them next segment. So there it is. Uh, three weekends in, and you're uh, two games back of the leaders, and a bit of a log jam there that will separate itself pretty soon, I think. Yeah, we're all going to play everybody, and <laughs> it'll all end up where we've got 18 games and see who's got the most wins at the end. What do you like about uh, I, I could You guys I like see. to talk about that all the time, and it really makes no sense. Well, we're checking because it. Got to check it. Got to see where you are. We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to play them all, and then we'll all talk about it then. How okay, about uh, producers taking note. No more standings rest of the season for Coach Rose. Uh, Zags and St. Mary's uh, on Thursday in Spokane. Yeah, that'll be a, a barn burn. It always is. It's a great game, and... Uh, you know, Gonzaga over the years have kind of handled them up there. I think they beat them. St. Mary's beat them up there a few years ago. But, uh, you know, the, St. Mary's is just really hard to beat. You can play really well. Uh, they're not going to beat themselves. The Zags are on a nice roll right now. They've just kind of cruised through the league. And, and had un, un, I think they're outscoring league opponents by ridiculous number, 30 points or something. Yeah. And so... It's a very talented team, a very deep team. What they can do defensively to St. Mary's causes St. Mary's a lot of problems. They can switch almost everything when everybody else is trying to you know, do things a little bit different. Um, I, I think the whole key will be Jock. Jock's gone up there a couple times and gotten foul trouble. Hasn't been able to play more than 20 or 30 minutes. If Jock can play 30 minutes in that game, 35 minutes, I think the Zags will have a hard time beating them. Okay, that's Coach Rose, and our first segment is taking the end of it to the break. As we do, we'll take you, want you to know that you can enjoy a, a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. When we come back to look ahead to the week ahead, as BYU basketball with Dave Rose continues from Studio C. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day, like buying your first car, what a beaut, or serving your mission. You come home and hop right into college, and then that magic day comes, marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey, but you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows, and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. BYU game day, and we are ready to go. You make sure that you take out your frustrations on this week. It is rivalry week here in Provo.
when you're playing against greatness, you have to be perfect. My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell, and I get to tell that story in a one-of-a-kind piece of art. I hope you'll join me on Painting the Town. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented in part by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. And by Smith's. Low prices, market fresh at Smith's. All right, to back up BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Great crowd here in Studio C. And uh, Dave, after playing... Uh, Three of your last four games on the road. Now you get three of four at the Marriott Center. You got back-to-back -back games Thursday, Saturday. LMU coming in the first up on Thursday night with uh, Coach Mike Dunlap and now his, I think, third season now in LA, right? Yeah, these are the, I think, the, the best times of, of, you know, for our home games. We, we got the students back from from the winter break, and uh, you know, we played that that, that group of, of teams without the students there and had great crowds. I thought our, I think our crowds have been awesome, but. Um, you know, Coach Dunlap has come in here the last couple of years and actually, um, you know, play us really well. They, 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 and they, they will this year, too. they got a really talented team. The one thing that I really noticed with LMU that is different from a lot of the other teams is that there's a lot of turnover in his program, similar to Pacific. There's just a lot of new guys all the time. And uh, he's got some new guys this year, and they're all putting up, you know, some some really good numbers. And so... Uh, I think I think it gets it, it's getting more difficult to kind of keep your guys, um, you know, the rules. You keep them happy, and and, <laughs> and 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 you know, other people are recruiting off your rosters nowadays, and a lot of transfers, and 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 I think that uh, you know that's something that that you know Mike's kind of been dealing with. We all deal with it. I mean, all of us got new players, but uh, I look forward to, to to see how we respond from a game where we played so well. You know, Greg, we've talked about this all the time about. There's certain games on your schedule that you play that don't really reflect who you really are sometimes. Like you, know, like you get beat really bad, and that's not you. And you, 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 you blow people away, and that's maybe not you. And somewhere in the middle is your team. And, and we were really good the other night. 79% and a half. It doesn't happen very often. I think the last time a BYU team shot over 79% and a half was 15 years ago, some, some crazy number. In the second half of an Air Force game, we shot 82% in 2003 or 2004, something like that, and and we needed to. We were down at the half and had to come back and to win that game. But it, it and, and then you finish at 61%, and you know you, you got to get all your players to 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 come back that the next game that you play, you start at zero zero, and how many games you've won and how many games they've won means nothing to the challenge that you have that day, and so. It'll be interesting to see how we how we come out on Thursday, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully our guys are on a roll and we can build on it. But you got coaches who are going to be a little bit out of whack because we're going to want to shoot 79% and a half, <laughs> and you're going to got to have players, you know, that are you know maybe feeling like they're letting everybody down because they miss a few shots, and so we we got to manage all that and, and hopefully play really well. That next game he talks about is LMU Thursday. Coach Dunlap, by the way, is in his fourth season now. He's had he's increased his win total in the first three, uh, by the way, coming into this year. So then it goes into uh, San Diego on Saturday. You get LMU Thursday. San Diego comes in on Saturday. And they're kind of the story, if you will, uh, uh, outside uh, of the top teams in the league because of how good they've been and where they've won and how well they're playing defense. Had a great season in, in, uh, so far. And one of the best teams in the country at defending the three-point line. Um, you know, also... Uh, you know, their overall field goal percentage defense is one of the best in the country. So they're really committed to the defensive end. And, you know, they've had a couple losses in league that have been just kind of, you know, nail biters, uh, kind of like ours. And um, this is a team that you actually recognize a lot of the names. You know, Olin Carter is a kid that, you know, lit us up pretty good last year. And they've got a few new guys that are really helping. But, uh, you know, we'll deal with, with San Diego, uh, you know, on Saturday. And I've seen them a lot because... They played most of the teams that we've already played, and so I've watched film. And 
Uh, they're for real. It's a really good team. Isaiah Wright, the kid that transferred from Utah, is really playing well at the guard line for him and got a big transfer inside of a Brazilian kid. So, Second Isaiah, Pinheiro. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, – it, it, it'll be it'll be a fun weekend. Yeah. Two game weekend here at home. Now our special guest on tonight's show, Dave, is Zach Selius, having a solid sophomore season after, like you said, turning in one of the best freshman seasons ever, especially from the three point line. Yeah, and I, I think that you know Zach continues to improve. I, one of the things that uh, is, is kind of interesting to me is he every time I see him, he looks like he's a little bit taller. And, uh, <laughs> That's good. You know, I'm I'm I was he and Yoli were kind of shooting together. I think Zach's taller than Yoli actually. And, uh, you know, that's uh, for the skill set that he has, his ability to get the ball from the, that high-low pass that we've kind of uh, really instilled into our offense this year. He's become one of our best passers from the high post. And, uh, and then, you know, with his ability to, uh, to, 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 to catch and shoot from the perimeter and put the ball on the floor and score, he's seen, you've seen a couple back-to-the-basket moves where he posts up down low and goes over his right shoulder, goes over his left shoulder, and uh, he's just developing an overall, you know, uh, really diverse game. Little Noah Hartsock baseline jumper thrown in. Uh, could it be possible he is actually getting taller, by the way? I, I don't know. I, I, uh, maybe we'll put uh, Jerem in charge of measuring the guys, you know, when they come in. We'll, we'll have him stand in front of our little ruler on the wall and just kind of That's mark right. him throughout the season. All right, Zach Selyus is our guest. He's coming up in a minute. Utah Community Credit Union, helping people make smart decisions every day. At UCCU, you can get a low fixed rate on a home equity line of credit and lock in that low rate for 10 years with absolutely no closing fee. So learn more, visit uccu.com. After the break, it is Zach Selyus striding into Studio C. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. If you have symptoms such as depression, fatigue, headaches, or an inability to concentrate, you may have low thyroid caused by Hashimoto's disease. We're trained in blood chemistry. We really understand how to look for imbalances in the simple blood test. And once we can identify what those are, then we can customize a course of treatment. Our biggest goal is that we can really teach and educate these patients. Red River Health and Wellness can help with the treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU SUU gymnastics meet. Live Friday at 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar Sports. I believe it's really important to be well rounded. Being here at BYU is the best decision I ever made. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. On a special episode of The Story Trek, After the Storm. Words can't explain how that night was. I revisit a tiny Texas town after it was devastated by Hurricane Harvey. I was scared. Five years ago here, I met an inspiring football coach who's so much more than just a play caller. Be ready to wear a lot of different hats if you're going to be the coach here because football is only about that much. And if the hurricane wasn't enough, a second tragedy hit this town. Let him move his feet. Let him move his feet. Join me from Texas tonight on The Story Trek. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're going to be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. With your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. And we are inside Studio C for more BYU basketball with Dave Rose. We're on Tuesday nights on both BYU TV and BYU Radio. A reminder to use the hashtag Rose Show for our Q&A segments. Time to welcome in tonight's special guest, a two-time state champion at Bountiful High School, one of the most prolific freshman three-point shooters in BYU history. He is back for his sophomore campaign. He wears jersey number two and can do more than shoot the three. He is Zach Celius. Zach, good to have you on. 
Good to be here. So uh, your family uh, has a bit of a history with BYU, uh, but when did you personally start putting uh, BYU uh, on your radar? When do you sense that you first got their attention in terms of coming to BYU? Um, I guess just when they recruited me. I don't know. When they <laughs> offered me, I was just like, all when right, When did you yeah. first uh, recall seeing a coach uh, by to watch you? Um, man, I don't even remember. It was probably just at an AU tournament. Does that sound right, Dave? Yeah, we went, well, it was in the spring actually, and, and uh, it's uh, it's hard to you know put them all together. We watched you play all over the country, you know, yeah. so I can't remember what it was, but that's when it was. Yeah. So uh, was BYU always uh, a priority for you, or were you going to kind of let things play out, or was it some place you wanted to go from the get-go? Um, you know, I didn't really care about it that much at first, but then I came down and met. You know, all the coaches, met all the players. I was like, man, I really love this place. And I just knew I wanted to come here. And uh, the guys you were with, some of them are still around, of course. Uh, how much does that have an impact on you on, say, a typical recruiting visit, just the guys you're hanging around with, the players? Um, you know, who wouldn't want to be around those guys? You know, they're the <laughs> nicest guys. You know, they're funny. You know, I don't think anyone dislikes another person on the team. You know, and it's just a great environment to be a part of. Like, who wouldn't want to be a part of it? Now, as a freshman at BYU, uh, a large percentage of your shots were three-pointers. You were kind of a three-point specialist. This year, you're doing a lot more than just hitting threes. Uh, can you maybe speak to the progression of your game and how much this maybe expanded from, say, your freshman year to your sophomore year? Um, I guess a freshman year, I was just told, you know, I need to do that. So it's just different roles that you got to kind of do. But, you know, it's... You know, people realize it's college basketball. You know, people are smart, and so it's harder to be able to shoot it. You know, because they know that you can do that. So you got to kind of change the game and change what you do, other than one thing. If I think back to Zach's freshman year, and the Colorado game jumps out to me is maybe the first one where he kind of maybe got loose a little bit and started to show what he could do, and then he just he never got turned off the rest of the yeah. season. You know, I think that. Uh... You know, Zach makes a great point, and, and that is once people know what you're really good at, they take it away, and then you've got to be able to, you know, find your way, and, and that's, that's the, the best part of when people always say, well, what's wrong with this kid in you know, his sophomore year, or maybe is there a sophomore slump? Well, it's a lot more difficult your sophomore year because you've got 40 films of you from your freshman year, and so I think that Zach's ability to develop his whole game is going to really pay off for him. For us right now, he's really starting to feel a lot more comfortable in the position that we have him playing and the role that we have him uh, in with this this year's team. I think that uh, once he, you know, once he continues with comp confidence is the biggest thing. And that's what the Colorado di game did for Zach is that he came in, made all those threes, you know, got us back into the game. We ended up losing the game, but he was never the same kid from there because he, he, he finally translated his, his uh, transformed his, his high school game to the college level. And, uh, you know, some guys, it takes a long time to do that. With Zach, it was four or five games in the season, and he was ready to go. He shot 50% from three for the year, and he never really, like, cooled off. He kind of stayed that way. Yeah, it was – we could always depend on Zach. And I remember we got beat a, a game that year, and, and, I, and after the season, I keep thinking, my goodness, what – went back and watched it, and he was – he had separated his shoulder the, the game before and didn't play in that game. And that was probably a big reason why we let that one get away because we just didn't have the, you know, the firepower from the perimeter like we've had in almost every other game. Zach, your sister Nancy played here at BYU. Uh, she was a freshman when the great Aaron Thorne was a senior. Uh, you, were, you were a young boy when she played here. Uh, how much do you remember of her as a basketball player? Um, honestly, I don't remember one bit. <laughs> <laughs> you, were, you were like maybe like eight, nine when she was playing? The only thing I remember from her playing is that I would run up the stairs and go get those frozen lemonades. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I remember. The concession. You're yeah. up, up to the concourse to get uh, frozen lemonade. Yeah. So you weren't necessarily tracking your stats for every game nope. as a nine-year-old. Okay. But you, you are aware that she played here, right? Yes, so I'm those, aware. The, those photos <laughs> were Okay, I'm okay. Aware. That's good. That's excellent. Uh, now, you're a pretty mellow guy. You're pretty low-key. But yet there are a couple of... Uh, aspects of your persona that, that gain a significant amount of attention. Uh, one is your shorts, and the other is your hairstyle. And so the shorts have been short since when? Like, was this a thing for you in high school, AAU, or is it a college thing? Um, it actually started in junior high, because uh, they gave us really long shorts, and I just couldn't 
like I couldn't dribble between my legs with the shorts that long. So I kept rolling them and I rolled them twice. And then I got put into the varsity game in junior high. And I was like, oh, I got to keep it going. And so I thought it was just a good luck charm. And so I just kept doing it ever since. Okay. Uh, as for the, uh, the styles here we got going. <laughs> I don't know. I just, <laughs> I just like it. And so I just keep doing it. I don't know. Just a good haircut, I guess. What's the general sense on the staff when, when Zach shows up with the latest look? Has he done a pretty good job staying consistent? or? Uh... It's kind of like when he was watching his sister play. I just go up and get eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> you worry about the things that really matter. Yeah, All right. Doesn't matter. Uh, well, outside of his own family, uh, no one knows Zach Selyus better than his teammates. It's time now to hear them talk about him. Zach... He's kind of a mystery man. As a player, he just shoots the lights out. He's probably one of the best shooters I've ever played around. He's always had the stroke. It's awesome to get to play with a guy like that that puts pressure on the defense. Zach's got a lot of nicknames. Zach, Z, Larry. His nickname, his freshman was Smelly. Zebo works for me. He would be like uh, Justin Bieber. He's a pretty boy. He's got great style. He'd probably be into fashion or something. Um, he likes to talk about, I don't want to say his love life, uh, but I will say he likes to talk about the, the females in his life. He'll throw like some sly jokes in every now and then, and he's kind of fun with that. So, Like he's really quiet, but when he says stuff, it's just so funny that you never see it coming from him. He's very good at cup stacking, I think is what you call it. You get him... Nine, nine or ten red solo cups and, and he'll he'll cup sack for you. He's a guy that uh, you know if you have a daughter you would hope that they're dating because uh, he's a great human being. He's a, he's a stud. All right so uh, is someone's daughter dating you currently Zach? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. Uh, so the cup stacking thing is that a real thing? That is not a real thing. <laughs> Where'd that come from? I have no idea. I've never cup stacked in my entire life. <laughs> that was a total makeup. But that, yeah. That was a total fabrication. Yeah, I'm not sure this is going to work. Yeah. Look oh, at that. Wow. We were ready to see it. <laughs> we were ready if that was a real thing. Yeah. Total fabrication. You've got awesome teammates, Zach. Yeah. I think that uh, Ryan was told off camera that in the next segment, he has to get cup stacking into the segment. So Ryan just said, hey, I think Zach can cup stack. <laughs> he, did, he did his job. And, and, uh, yeah. So if we tried, to, it wasn't going to work. We were trying to do that right now for you. Uh, it probably wouldn't work. Probably wouldn't work. All right, we'll try it during the break, maybe see if it's going to go. Uh, Cougar fans, remember, basketball season is blanket season. That means Minky Couture. Learn more at softminkyblankets.com. We've got more with Zach Selyus coming up. When we come back, we'll go to a live audience and social media for Q&A with Zach Selyus. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. <laughs> If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Lou runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU Barton men's volleyball game. Live Friday, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar sports. Tomorrow on Studio C, we revoke the Stamp Act and invoke the Party Act. Oh. Am I right? Doing the Paul Revere. We could be about to see something genuinely remarkable. Yes, 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 yes! Yes, let's go. People who really, truly care about others can do phenomenal things. This is like legitimately uplifting. I'm not gonna give up. I have to do this. I think tonight was the start of something really special. Your story, what would you say it is? Oh, wow. Oh, there's another death. Oh, green! 
It's completely blown my mind. It's even better than I expected. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is presented by Siegfried and Jensen, helping Utah families for over 25 years. All right, taking a look at our Cougars in the pros, Jimmer Fredette uh, took part in the CBA All-Star Game this past weekend. Took second in the three-point contest. He scored 26 in the All-Star Game and scored a 28 in a game today. You see Eric Mika's totals for a recent game in Italy on January 14th, same day that Brandon Davies put up 8-4 and four in Lithuania. And uh, L.J. Rose has been re-signed with the Utah Jazz G League team, the Salt Lake City Stars. We are back with Zach Selyus here in Studio C. Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Time to give uh, Cougar Nation the floor as uh, fans get a chance to interact with Zach. Can we start here in the live audience? We've got uh, Brenton Farrell at our mic. Hello again, Brenton. Hey, Greg. So, Zach, what pregame ritual or habit could you just not live without? Um, I have to shower before every game. That's one. So I have to shower. That's a good thing. <laughs> That's true. Cup stacking is also a big part of yeah. life. <laughs> Found out as well. All right, uh, it's time for the skinny mic and the uh, game show music. Yes, it's time for 10 questions. Uh, skinny mic? Julian's got the skinny mic. All right. Uh, let's take a look at our leaderboard uh, first up here. Our 10 questions uh, leaderboard. See where we shape up here. We've got, I think the last four have all gone nine for 10, if not mistaken. So we have a four-way tie up top. At 9 for 10, Luke's at 7 for 10, and uh, TJ Haas has dropped off the first page. Sorry, TJ. All right, here we go. Ten questions. Uh, which of the following BYU players did not wear jersey number two at BYU? You wear number two, of course. Yeah. I'm going to give you four guys. One of them did not wear number two. Okay. Matt Carlino, Craig Cusick, Travis Hansen, Tyler Haas. Tyler Haas. Got it. He wore three and 23, but yes, where you go. Uh, question two. Which two teams did Bountiful High School defeat for the two state championships you helped the team win? We beat Kearns and Orem. There you go, Orem in 2014, Kearns in 2015. You're two for two. Your first BYU regular season career points and first career three-pointer came against this team. Oh, man. As a freshman. Um, regular season opener. Oh, geez. I have no idea. Utah Valley. Oh. UVU. Well, no, no. no reaction. Question four. <laughs> and as Dave knows, the actor questions have misfired every week. Here we go. This actor shot to fame in High School Musical and is currently starring in The Greatest Showman. Uh, Zac Efron. Hey! <laughs> That is the first one. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go. Oh, my faith in humanity is restored. <laughs> Zach Efron. See, he got it. It's his first name. Uh, question five. Who led BYU in scoring during your freshman season? Uh, was it Nick Emery? Chase Fisher. Oh. Remember him? I do remember Okay, him. good. Uh, uh, question six. This basketball term is defined as, quote, ball movement caused by a player who, in control, who bats, pushes, or taps the ball to the playing court once or several times. What term is that? A player who bats, pushes, or taps the ball to the playing court once or several times. We call that a... Uh, a double dribble? We call it a dribble. It's all right. I don't know. It's quite a video, but you can't have a double dribble without a dribble. So we're going to go with that. We're giving it to him. Uh, question seven. Four players on the current BYU roster have Idaho hometowns. Can you name all four? Let's see. Ryland, McKay, Braden, and Colby. Way to go. Four for four. Well done. Question eight. Which BYU player leads the team in three-pointers made this season? Um... Is it Eli? It is Eli. Nice. Yeah, with 48. Nice. Question number nine. Which of your teammates would you most trust to help you with homework? Uh, Braden Shaw. <laughs> Braden yeah. Shaw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And question 10. Who cuts your hair? Uh, sports clips. There it is. <laughs> All right. 
So uh, we have a staff. We have a staff back in the, that all they do is tabulate the scores throughout this entire segment. And they're going to give us an updated leaderboard look here. Did you make it to the first page? Oh, look at that. He's on the first page. Eight, he bumps eight. off Luke Worthington and with eight out of ten finds himself just one game out of first place. Way to go, Zach. Yeah. Well done. Good job. Now, stay with us through the commercial, but officially you're done for the night. But thank you. Wait, you did a great job. Thank and, you. And you got Zach Efron, so yeah. that was made, made, made my night. <laughs> All right. After the break, your questions for the Cougars head coach from the audience and from Twitter. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. Is happiness simply about doing what we love to do? Or is it more than that? There are times when we need each other. Only by giving of ourselves do we truly find happiness. In supporting each other, in sharing each other, we're all connected. We revere life, and we revere health. Let's live better. My name is Eric Dowdle. As an artist, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the world and meet some of the greatest and most interesting people. Spending time with the locals and learning their history allows me to discover the heart of each city. Each place has a unique story to tell, and I get to tell that story in a one-of-a-kind piece of art. I hope you'll join me on Painting the Town. So on season two, uh, I met my father for the first time. Whose relative are you? Uh, I'm Joe's father. I'm incredibly thankful that Royals of Race gave me the opportunity to meet him when I did. And then meeting him led me to my sisters. Go for it. Yeah, it's a lot. I have a baby brother. <laughs> Knowing that I had sisters out there who had no idea that I existed and getting to meet them. I'm gonna hug you again. <laughs> it was so emotional and so powerful. There's a bond there that's very unique and special and I'm just now figuring that out as a 28 year old man, not knowing they existed for 28 years. This is medicine. Oh my God. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. It's hard to tell people what you're going through, and it's very frustrating. But I'm still me. Yes, you are, Daddy. I love you. <laughs> you! You! No! My fault? Your fault. You're right, it's my fault. Maybe both of us. Just the two of us. Here, Zach Selyus on the bump. Hands off to Bryant. Perimeter right. Elijah into the alley. Bounce pass to Yo collects and hammers it home. Yoli Childs points 16 and 17. And BYU's lead is back to 18. That's our exciting play of the game. Presented by Nissan. A proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan. Innovation that excites. We're back with BYU basketball with Dave Rose here in Studio C. And uh, Coach Rose, you talked earlier about how well Eli and Yo play together right now. And that's another good example of uh, the chemistry they have on the floor. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, any time that, that Eli can come off a ball screen and get penetration into the paint, there's so, there's so many options. And when the post guy steps up, then the option is that baseline post guy. And that's usually Yo. He's, he's down there a lot. Um, you know, he, 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 we actually have got him up. Yoli up into the elbow area, and that's where he got all of his assists this, uh, um, you know, this weekend. He, a couple times he was doubled in the post, and he skipped it out, and we hit a perimeter shot. Yoli's assist numbers will continue to go up the better our perimeter guys shoot the ball because he's getting a lot of attention down low from uh, a, you know, a lot of different teams are doing different things. So hopefully our, our guys can all uh, you know, just keep their confidence up as far as shooting the ball from the perimeter. We've got some live audience and Twitter questions ready to roll for you. We start this week right here in the studio with uh, Jay Stainer. Hello, Jay. Hi there. Coach, what do you do to keep your players motivated? Do you have any trade secrets to your success? Threaten them. No. <laughs> 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 um, you know, I think that today's player is, is way different than players when I first started. I think players are so um, invested in this uh, with, with uh, some such a, a young age. They have... You know, personal trainers, and, and most of these guys are pretty much self-starters. I, I think the motivation for me, the challenge of motivation is to, to, to motivate them to, to, the, to, to form a team and to trust each other and to play with each other. Um, and then, then to keep their confidence at a really high level. That, that's probably the, 
uh, what I feel the most pressure from a coach as far as trying to motivate guys is in those three areas. Thanks for the question, Jay. Appreciate it. From uh, Twitter, my man Tanner Lewis asks, uh, who wore the shorter shorts better when they played basketball, you or Zach? Hey, uh, you know, I was going to make a comment. I, I wish that we had a picture of me in my shorts because uh, those aren't the, 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 the shorts that Zach are wearing. They're not short. Those are long shorts. We just went to an extremely long short, you know, in, in our and now it's back to where it's just a normal short. If you want to see short shorts, go back to the 80s. Yep. And you'll see some pretty Your short shorts, shorts, Larry Bird shorts, those yeah. are the ones that were. The socks were longer than the shorts. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Uh, studio question again. Uh, we have Jeff at the mic. Uh, Jeff Olson is with us. Hello, Jeff. Hi there. Hey, Coach. Uh, so I was watching an ESPN 30 for 30 and saw they did a piece on Phi Slamma Jamma. Just wondering if you still keep in touch with the boys. Yeah, I do. And we all had short shorts. That's, yeah. that, that's the deal. <laughs> if you watch the 30 for 30, there's a. Uh, it makes Zach's shorts look like they're, you know, pretty long. So, yeah. I do, I do st uh, stay in touch with a lot of those guys. We, uh, we had a reunion a few years ago at the Final Four that was in Houston. Everybody was there except Akeem. I saw Akeem last year, not last Final Four, the year before when the Final Four was in Houston. Uh, I actually had my kids with me, and we went over to the University of Houston just to show them some of uh, – they were tearing, going to tear down Hoffines the next year, which is – it's under construction right now, being torn down. Uh, rebuilt. So I took him over there, went through it all, and Hakeem was there in the locker room to do a, a, a clinic for some of the kids. So we walked in, and, and my uh, my wife and my daughters, my daughter, two daughters, and my son and their spouses, they got to meet him. And uh, it was kind of interesting. The first thing he said when he saw me, he says, he says, oh, Dave Rose, you look better now than you did when you played. I thought, <laughs> I thought that was kind of an insult at the time. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like my short shorts, you know. <laughs> when you play. But it was, I guess it's kind of a compliment, and I look pretty good after playing 30 years yeah. ago. You know? uh, he was Akeem without the H when he first got to you. Uh, absolutely. He? he was afraid to tell the guys that they'd made a mistake. <laughs> so the first couple of years, it was just... And then when he got to the Rockets, he made everybody... Oh, listen, this is how you spell my name. This is what's right. So it's Akeem in college and Hakeem, and Hakeem in, uh, as a pro. As a pro. Uh, second question from Twitter from another Tanner, uh, at Coach Wilk3, question for Coach Rose. How has your first job at Millard High School shaped the rest of your career? Well, you know, that's, uh, we, I think about it every time I drive down Interstate 15, you know, uh, and we pass Fillmore. And the th I guess the thing that really gets me is the baseball field because it's right off the freeway. And I was the baseball coach there for a couple years. And it was just so hard to get 15 outs, you know, <laughs> because you, if you got, you always had to get to the fifth inning before the game would end if they had 10 more runs than you. But getting 15 outs was hard. Uh, but what I remember about being the basketball coach there that maybe has prepared me for my whole career is the pressure of being a coach because you, uh, you have cuts and then you go to the grocery store, and the butcher, you cut his kid, and now he's cutting your meat, okay? <laughs> and then you go to the truck stop, cafe, and the waitress, you cut her, her kid, and she's serving you your food. <laughs> and so there, uh, there's a lot of pressure in those small towns to win. And, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know if I really felt that as a high school player in Houston, you know, all the pressure from around and from parents but when I got that job in felt it. that city you felt it and, it and it never went away it's been that way ever since ever since from when I went to St. George and coached and then the Dixie College and then here it's it's uh, one of the real motivating factors of, of being a coach is uh, to make sure you make people who support you proud of the product yeah. you know so well the, the, those 15 outs notwithstanding did you enjoy coaching baseball um no <laughs> you know, I played baseball too, yeah. and I, I, I think I might have been a better baseball player than I was basketball player, but it just did not hold my interest like, like basketball. So uh, I do remember a game in Emory County, and uh, you know we, we we couldn't we never got the outs. They just called the game. We never got the five of them. I think it was a twenty. A 20 run, a 21 a rule. 20, <laughs> 20, a 20, 20 run ruled us. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So. All right. Thanks for the questions, folks. And more Dave Rose Q&A coming up after this break. This is BYU Basketball with Dave Rose. 
On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU Sports Nation is about the fans. Sports, not my thing. That's okay, you can watch Studio City. Um, we do it for the fans. How many of the field goals equate to uh, a basket? 7.2. To me, it should be about Taysom Hill more than it is about Spencer and I, but it's fun to be a part of that together. I was not aware that there would be this much math in sports. Me neither. People know the show. They want to come up and say hi, and they've driven for hours to be at that game. I can do quit it. Yeah? You've you been a snitch, but you wouldn't be the snitch. I don't want to talk about that, Okay, man. that's cool. Spencer and I are part of the fan base. We graduated from BYU. Is there yeah. a lot of running in baseball? Yeah. It's um, like boxing. Is it like boxing? Yeah, it's like boxing. Well, I saw a guy punch a dude in baseball. Spencer and I feel like we're just the connection between BYU sports and the fans. It has meaning, right? BYU sports matters to people, so it's great to be a part of that. BYU Basketball with Dave Rose is brought to you in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. All right, so our final Q&A segment for Coach Rose. We have uh, time for one more question. Each week you want to use the hashtag Rose Show to get a question in for the coach. We go to Twitter, at Elliot Sharfs asks, what college basketball coach or which college basketball coach do you look up to either uh, the most, either past or present? Well, I'd probably say my own coach, Guy Lewis. You know, he passed away um, last year. And um, the last few years, he, he wasn't, you know, very healthy at all. But, you know, the, the, you, you, there's just something about a guy who gives you an opportunity to do something that you always wanted to do that you, you, it's hard to kind of see anything uh, besides just really, really good in, in him. I, he, he uh, it was funny, I, I read a thing today that, they wanted to know, like, what game today would be two schools would be the game of the century uh, because this weekend so many years ago was when UCLA and Houston played. It was Bill Walton against, I mean, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar against uh, uh, Elvin Hayes. This is at the Astrodome, wasn't it? At the Astrodome and nationally televised game, one of the first ones ever. And, and uh, you try to think of how to put an event like that together today, who would be those two, two teams? But uh, to think about the fact that... Uh, you know, Coach Lewis and uh, and John Wooden were involved in, in that game. Uh, and there's a lot of things that I still do that I still believe in, uh, you know, that, uh, that Coach Lewis kind of taught us as a group, and it's just part of my, What's one I guess, thing? my basketball DNA. I, I think the, uh, the competitive uh, practice is something that is – uh, that was really instilled in me when we played for him. He was he was a three hour a day guy, which whew, those practices lasted forever. And there were 20 minute segments, and every one of them were competitive. And you kept a score, and there's a winner and a loser. And and I, uh, I I just believe that really helped shape me as a player. All right, great answer, great question. Thanks, folks. Right, we're back after this to wrap up BYU basketball with Dave Rose. Stay with us. Back in a minute. When the Sports Nation guys do a show at Deseret First Credit Union. You never know which BYU Sports VIP might show up. That's the Cosmobile. The Cosmobile is rolling up, baby. Woo! Cosmo's here. Hey, maybe Cosmo needs a student checking account or a soda inside. This has already been the best in a minute ever. 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 Go pump that music, Cosmo. Deseret First Credit Union. Proud to support BYU Sports Nation on BYU Radio and BYU TV. Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the BYU SUU gymnastics meet. Live Friday at 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar Sports.
I believe it's really important to be well-rounded. Being here at BYU is the best decision I ever made. There's a time for everything. When it's time for basketball, locked in to play hoops. My first love is basketball. I want to play basketball as long as possible. I love the challenge. On a special episode of The Story Trek, After the Storm. Warriors can't explain how that night was. I revisit a tiny Texas town after it was devastated by Hurricane Harvey. I was scared. Five years ago here, I met an inspiring football coach who's so much more than just a play caller. Be ready to wear a lot of different hats if you're going to be the coach here, because football's only about that much. And if the hurricane wasn't enough, a second tragedy hit this town. Let him move his feet. Let him move his feet. Join me from Texas tonight on The Story Trek. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're gonna be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. You're watching BYU TV. See the good in the world. I'm stacking during the break. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Basketball with Dave Rose, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Here's our broadcast schedule for this week. Thursday night, late one, against LMU, live on ESPNU at 11 Eastern. Pre-game on the radio at 10 o'clock Eastern. And then on the weekend, San Diego on Saturday night, back to a normal start time. 9 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock here in the mountains. A radio pre-game at 6 Mountain, 8 Eastern. And it's also on BYU TV that night as well. All right, Coach, uh... After back-to-back -back wins last week, you're looking to kind of extend the streak, but the, the focus for you is not about streaks or runs, but you talked about uh, putting each conference game on an island. Uh, a little bit more about that and what you hope that translates to in league. Well, I, I, just, I just believe that uh, each game is, is, is such a challenge, and, it's, and they're all unique challenges. It's different. Uh, it's amazing how diverse our league is. It's, uh, uh, and, and, you know, some teams are really driving teams. we got quite a few three-point shooting teams. Uh, everyone has, has got a pretty good defensive game plan for you that makes you kind of get out of your, your comfort area. When, you, when we get to do what we're really good at, we're pretty good. The, the issue is when those teams kind of take those things away from us and then what, what do we rely on and how good are we going to be. And I think that's where a lot of balance comes in. Uh, I, I, just, I just really feel like uh, as, 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 as difficult as it is, one, one game you have way too many practices for and the next game you don't have enough practices when you play Thursday, Saturday. And you can't confuse the two challenges. you got to really you know, attack the Thursday night. Then once that's over and you, you deal with you – know, we've been good on Thursday nights. And the other, you know, this was the, the best Saturday game that we've played uh, against Santa Clara. So hopefully we're, we're figuring this out and, and that uh, we have another really good weekend. Well, so it's BYU-LMU on Thursday night. As we talked about earlier, uh, St. Mary's plays at Gonzaga that same night. Uh, let's check on, the, um, check on the weather in both the cities uh, for St. Mary's <laughs> and, and Gonzaga. Moraga, uh, 54 degrees, uh, high humidity there in Moraga. Is, is that a normal temperature for Moraga this time of year? We're going to research that for next week's show. Okay. But it's, uh, it seems, 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 seems mild to me, oh. but... Uh, and then, of course, in Spokane, uh, where, where the game will be played, uh, a little closer a to freezing. Uh, but the game in, is inside, so that won't have as much factor. Right. Humidity uh, not as big a deal, nor yeah. the winds, I think, uh, as big true. a deal. Yeah. But, uh, you know. But, you know, in Provo, it's nine degrees normal. Uh, nine warmer. degrees above normal for yeah. January. But we're also told that a cold front could be moving in this weekend. So, uh, yeah. well, And we go. play inside also. Good. That's a good note, fans. If you're coming to the games this weekend, indoors. Games will be indoors. Both, both will be inside at the Marriott Center. All right, I think we're done for this all week. Right. That's about all we can do. We'd love to see you here in Studio C for next week's show for sports and weather. Uh, to request seats, go to byucougars.com slash Rose Show next Monday or Tuesday. Up to the showtime. We don't care. Reserve a spot in next week's audience. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Mountain on BYU TV and BYU Radio. For Zach Sallies, who doesn't stack cups. And for Dave Rose, I'm Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Basketball with Dave Rose live from Studio C. We'll see you next week. <laughs> he doesn't even <laughs> five years ago I was diagnosed with Parkinson's it's hard to tell people what you're going through and it's very frustrating 
But I'm still me. Yes, you are, Daddy. <laughs> How did one man's childhood dreams of sporting success turn to dust? Within four years from being at the Chelsea Academy, I was working in a petrol station with no qualifications. God. And the suspense builds as we reveal our massive secret. Just so quite. <laughs>